Hello Booktube, welcome back to my 2024 library tour. This episode begins my history collection. Um, for a long time, my history collection was in the bookcases behind me, what was the history wall. But I eventually decided to move my manga collection to, the, to this wall over here and move my history collection to the wall that you normally see behind me when I film videos. But those bookcases aren't enough to encompass my entire history collection. So I have a few, uh, two, so I have my headboard bookcase also um, has my some of my history collection. So um, the first two episodes of the history tour will be um, focusing on the history books that are currently on or in the headboard bookcase. So when I had my history collection behind me, I basically had them in the order in which I collected them. So new works of history or newly acquired works of history would go at the pretty much at the next available space. Um, however, once I started to move my manga collection over here, um, the sort of topmost bookcase shelf here um, eventually became the more marquee or bigger works of history, which um, when they weren't over there uh, were at the top shelf of my um, headboard bookcase. So let's get going. So starting with the Transwise book, um, because I had it at the end, but it's kind of starting to open up like that, is The Soviet Century by Carl Schlogel. I think this is a work in translation. Yes, translated by Rodney Livingstone. So this is a history of the Soviet Union that focuses on the everyday. Um, the first chapter deals with effectively flea markets. I wanted to read this book as one of two mammoths for this past March of the Mammoths, and I didn't quite get on with it. I'm not entirely sure if I just didn't connect with the work or I'm just not that, that interested in Soviet history. So it was a bail. But I might come back to it this coming December. Um, another book that I have bailed on on this um, shelf is The New Roman Empire by Anthony Caldella. So this is a history of the Eastern continuation of the Roman Empire that is commonly called the Byzantine Empire. And it's a massive work of Roman history, of Byzantine history. And I didn't get on with this either. Um, and I know the reason why I didn't get on with it. Um, I didn't particularly like the focus at the beginning. And I'm also not particularly fond of Caldellis's writing style because I have also struggled with his other work of Byzantine history, Streams of Gold, Rivers of Blood, which we will get to later in the tour. Next is a work of history that I really enjoyed from last year, and that is Two Houses, Two Kingdoms, A History of France and England, 1100 to 1300 by Catherine Hanley. So this is a history of um, England and France and of its two royal houses, the House of Normandy that eventually became the House of Anjou or the Plantagenets and the French Capetian dynasty. Um, this is a fantastic work. I really enjoyed it. Next is one of my all-time favorite histories. Oh. 
and that is Big Wonderful Thing, A History of Texas by Stephen Harrigan. This is a massive, wonderful, irreverent, funny uh, history of Texas. It is amazing. This is history as it should be done. Another work of history that I really love is Weaver, Scraps, and Kings, A New History of the Ancient Near East by Amanda H. Padani. So this is a history of the ancient Near East that takes as its sort of organizing principle the usage of cuneiform as the primary writing method of this region. And what Padani does that is neat is that rather than just focusing on the kings, she also focuses on um, other people and the people who appear in writing. Um, there are weavers and scribes and merchants whose stories appear in this book, and they are oftentimes incredibly fascinating and even funny. And this is a fantastic work of history in probably my, the area of history that I am most interested in. Um, I'm also interested in ancient Egypt. And so this is Pharaohs of the Sun, The Rise and Fall of Tutankhamun's Dynasty by Guy de la Baudoyer. So this is the history of the 18th dynasty, the dynasty that reunified Egypt uh, to form the new kingdom and ended with uh, Tutankhamun. Although there were two pharaohs after him who are included in the 18th dynasty, but they really don't. I mean, they're sort of transitional between the 18th and 19th dynasties. So this is um, an interesting book. I wish I had liked. I wish I liked it more than I do. Next is another work that I really enjoy: uh, Bismarck's War, the Franco-Prussian War, and the Making of Modern Europe by Rachel Crestel. This is an amazing book that not only looks at uh, the military side of the Franco-Prussian War, but also the civilian toll of the war. And it is just wonderful. Another book I loved from last year is Young Queens, the Renaissance Women and the Price of Power by Leah Redman Chang. So this is a group biography of... Um, Catherine de' Medici, her oldest daughter, um, Elizabeth of Valois, and her eventual her ward and eventual daughter-in-law, Mary, Queen of Scots. And behind the scenes as sort of a fourth queen is Queen Elizabeth Tudor, the Queen of England. This is wonderful. This is just an amazing book. Amazing. I also really love uh, A World Beneath the Sands, The Golden Age of Egyptology by Toby Wilkinson. So this is the history of Egyptology from the 18th century through to the discovery of the tomb of Tutankhamun. And it is very well done. The next three books are big biographies. First up is King of the World by Philip Mansell. This is a biography of Louis XIV that focuses on him as a global monarch. And this book has a special place in my heart because I was reading it during a rather trying um, health issue that my mom had. I also enjoyed... Um, the Last King of America, The Misunderstood Reign of George III by Andrew Roberts. Um, this biography goes a long way to rehabilitating George III's reputation. He doesn't ne deserve nearly half the historical or condemnation that he gets. I'm also rather far fond of 
Maria Theresa, the Habsburg Empress in Her Time by Barbara Schulberg Willinger, translated by Robert Savage. This is a fascinating and perhaps at times dry biography of Maria Theresa. This is a uh, post wall post square, how Bush, Gorbachev, Cole, and Dean shaped the world after 1989 by Christina Spohr. So this is the history of the end of the Cold War, the uh, fall of the communist regimes in Central and Eastern Europe, and the Tiananmen Square massacre, and the end of the Soviet Union. This is fairly good. and deserves more attention than it got. This is um, Children of Ashen Elm, A History of the Vikings by Neil Price. Um, I thought this was rather good. The Napoleonic Wars, A Global History by Alexander Nikabaritsi. So this is a history of uh, the Napoleonic Wars with a global focus. So not just the European theaters, but also the American theaters and the Asian theaters. The World, A Family History of Humanity by Simon Sebeck Montefiore. I have not got to this massive work of history yet. So the last two books on the shelf are part of what I think is currently a trilogy. It might be a quartet by now, but as far as I know, if only the first two books are available in English or not in English in the U.S., because they were originally British. Uh, with the second book actually being the first one published in the US. So this is The Age of Decadence, A History of Britain, 1880 to 1914 by Simon Heffer. I really enjoyed this book. Um, I had a blast reading it uh, a few, when I read it a few years ago. I think it was one of my favorite books of 2021 or 2022. Unfortunately, I did not get nearly as well. I didn't get anywhere along with the first book in the series, High Minds of the Victorians and the Birth of Modern Britain by Simon Heffer. I thought this one, maybe the focus is more on bits of history that I'm not interested in or that I have a harder time uh, with. So that was the first shelf of my history collection. I will be back tomorrow with the um, second shelf of the Headboard Bookcase. So until then, Booktube, thank you. Have a great uh, rest of your weekend and stay safe.